it's an orange juice. What's up, everyone? This is Orange Juice. The Dark Goblin has one of the fastest load times in the game, two and a half times faster than the Spear Goblin. This means that he can lock onto a new target way faster. When he goes straight to a tower, left ignored, he'll deal 400 damage to an arena tower. The damage dealt is similar to ignoring Spear Goblins. They're not too strong, but you can only ignore them up to a certain point since they're so easy to counter. He has insane range, just a bit shorter than Princess, with a 6.5 tile reach, he shares the exact range as a Royal Giant, so he can actually outrange any defensive building including the Inferno Tower, which has a 6 tile reach. I'll be talking about advanced building tech around the end. With a sliver of health, when the tower only needs to one shot him, he'll still deal annoying chip damage to the tower. He'll get two shots off dealing 200 damage. The damage is comparable to one musketeer shot. He manages to land two darts because he has incredibly fast attack speed and load time. At tournament standard, he has the exact same health as a princess. They won't die to zap, but they will die from arrows for an even trade, or the log for a positive elixir trade. The fast attack speed and fast unit acquisition allows him to destroy skeleton army. He one-shots skeletons and doesn't hesitate or stutter locking onto a new target. He's kind of like an expo, each attack is really weak but there's a lot of it. On the same note, he's pretty good at countering graveyard. He can demolish skeletons in one hit as long as there's nothing tanking for the graveyard. He can clean up every single skeleton with the help of the arena tower. Just for reference, a level 4 dart goblin will be able to one shot level 1 graveyard skeletons. The drawback is that he has incredibly fast speed so he'll start moving forward between each attack. That means he'll never hide behind the safety of the King's Tower. So you or your opponent will be able to arrow him without worrying about activating the King's Tower. When the graveyard is paired with a tank, the Dark Goblin's attack speed is 0.2 seconds too slow so skeletons will start accumulating very fast, dealing 1500 damage to the tower despite him sniping all of the skeletons as fast as he can. An Ice Golem Graveyard combo is 7 elixirs, so it's reasonable that you'll be able to pair the Dark Goblin with something else. If you use an Ice Golem, it's important that you plant him on the corner edge, maximizing the time that he's in the Graveyard spawn zone. I honestly think Graveyard spawn RNG needs to be eliminated from the game. Here's the same scenario from the last scene where not enough skeletons spawned around the Ice Golem, resulting in him not popping. This causes my tower to suffer an extra 500 damage. When you have elite barbarians coming at you, one of the best ways of taking care of them is by kiting them with an ice golem. You can actually shut them down with a dark goblin. He's not too strong, but he offers just enough damage. But OJ, elite barbarians are never sent in alone. Realistically, you should have the same amount of elixir countering their cards. The examples in this video break down and simplify the raw interactions so that you can apply them in real situations. It'll always be different, and in this example, without both towers shooting the elite barbarians, the Dark Goblin does die, but he did help to successfully defend against everything else. He's really good in fast chip cycle decks. Pair him with an Ice Spirit and he'll be able to deal a thousand damage to the tower. It's an absolutely devastating combo, but it is incredibly easy to counter and it's something you should never ignore. The Mega Minion has a painfully slow move speed, so it can take out the Mega Minion from a distance with the help of an Arena Tower. It takes two darts to kill one Lava Pup, so he's okay with dealing with Lava Pups, though not the best, and realistically the Lava Hound is never by itself. It depends on the situation, but something like an Ice Golem can soak up the damage while it snipes them all away. An Ice Golem combo works great too deals quite a bit of damage that can't be left unchecked. Alone the Dark Goblin can take out a balloon from a distance and stop it from reaching the tower, but it won't prevent any death damage. You'll have to pair him with an Ice Spirit if you want to prevent any death damage to your tower, as well as to position him at an angle away from the balloon's destination to ensure that he doesn't die to the bomb damage. A really popular combo right now is an Ice Golem Balloon Push. With the Ice Golem tanking, that's a 7 elixir combo so you'll have to commit more elixir. Sometimes you have to get creative and just react with whatever you have on your hand. Fireball deals decent area damage and is just enough to stop the balloon from attacking the tower. 
depending on the timing, you can potentially use the log to push back the ice golem. This prioritizes the balloon's position as it floats into range of the arena tower. Overall, his damage per second isn't that high. It's kind of weaker than two archers, but his range advantage allows him to completely shut down certain units like the knight for a positive elixir trade. This tiny little guy is really annoying because he can kite a Valkyrie into the other lane, then survive one attack with just a tiny bit of health, head to the tower, and manage to get two shots onto the arena tower before dying. Against other units like a Musketeer, Mini Pekka, or Archers, it'll manage to kill them, but it will die in the process. Against the Minion Horde, I mean if you're in a bad rotation and don't have anything better in your hand, it's better than nothing and helps stop most of the Horde. He can one-shot Fire Spirits, so with his rapid fire attack, they just get absolutely demolished. But when facing Fire Spirits one level higher, it takes two shots to kill each Fire Spirit. You have to keep in mind, even though he's a goblin, he still costs 3 elixir, so it's not entirely a bad idea to counter him with a knight. It's a unit trade, so you'll both be at the same elixir, but now they'll have to deal with your knight. You have to be careful though, just like with an inferno tower plant against the roll giant. The dark goblin has an absurd amount of range, so he'll lock onto the tower really fast, and you could fail to defend against the chip damage. Archers can take care of him for a neutral trade if you really can't afford any chip damage on your arena tower. Just like Princess, he'll die to arrows, but the ultimate counter to him will be the log. It takes milk completely for a positive elixir trade, and it chips the tower. But you can shut him down with even bigger trades. An Ice Spirit can tank two hits before dying, then freeze the Dark Goblin, completely shutting him down. Even though the Goblin Gang also costs three elixir and dies to the log, they're not all that similar to the Dark Goblin. He doesn't die to zap like Spear Goblins or Stab Goblins do, and he has a much faster attack speed. Let's talk more advanced tech. Spawners and Elixir Pumps have a bigger hitbox than defensive buildings. We'll go into detail about Spawners first. Since he can one-shot Fire Spirits, he's a tiny little Furnace Killer. When the Furnace is planted three tiles from the river, you can just straight up snipe the Furnace from your side. When it's planted four tiles from the river, you can deploy him in the furnace lane. He'll take care of a wave of fire spirits, then start taking out the furnace, safely out of range of that arena tower. If a spawner is planted five tiles from the river, you won't be able to deal as much damage. Since the dark goblin has to travel a bit deeper, he's gonna be within range of that arena tower. If you attack the opposite lane, you could bypass the spawner and chip their tower instead. It really depends on the situation of the game. Sometimes applying pressure on the other lane forces your opponent to break their combo. All of these rules apply to all spawner buildings and the elixir pump because they have a much wider hitbox. He pretty much shuts down tombstone, so he pairs really well with the hog. Now when it comes to defensive or offensive buildings, cannon, bomb tower, inferno tower, tesla, mortar, and expo, they have a much smaller hitbox than spawners. So when you plant the Dark Goblin in the middle against the defensive building with a 4-2 plant, he will actually walk deeper past the river, causing him to be within range of the arena tower. What you'll need to do against a 4-2 defensive building placement is place the Dark Goblin on the inner edge of the bridge. This placement will allow him to remain out of range of that tower. This gets a bit more complex because Tesla has a slightly smaller hitbox than the other buildings and it remains hidden until you're actually within range of the Tesla. So when the Tesla placement is 4-2, and you plant it in the middle or inner edge, the Dark Goblin will always walk within range. Whereas if you plant the Dark Goblin on the outer edge, he'll actually bypass the Tesla chipping the tower. The Dark Goblin is not a replacement for archers, minions, princess, or musketeer. They all serve their own purpose. Archers can counter graveyard Minions can completely shut down a graveyard tank combo because there's so many of them. A princess is a splasher with 2.5 tiles more reach, while the musketeer is a slow, strong, and sturdy unit, while the dark goblin is really fast and fragile. Every unit has their purpose, and this unit offers a completely different function from any other card in the game. He doesn't feel super powerful, because he's not. He's a 3 elixir rare card, but he does prove to be a reliable support card on both offense and defense when situations arise. If you want to learn more, stay tuned for more unit interactions.
Lumberjack be like, swerve. <laughs> 